Do you know how powerful it is to pray for someone? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. A missionary on furlough told this true story while visiting his home church in Michigan. While serving at a small field hospital in Africa, every two weeks I traveled by bicycle through the jungle to the nearest large city for supplies. This was a journey of two days and required camping overnight at the halfway point in the jungle. On one of these trips, just as I arrived in the city, I saw two men fighting, one of whom had been injured. As a missionary doctor, I intervened and treated his injuries. And at the same time, I talked to him about the Lord Jesus Christ. Afterwards, I went about my planned tasks, collecting money from a bank, purchasing medicine and supplies, then began my two-day journey back to the field hospital. Halfway back, I camped overnight as usual, then arrived home without incident. Two weeks later, I repeated my trip. Upon arriving in the city, I was met by the young man I had treated. He told me that it was known that I regularly carried money and medicines. He said, Two weeks ago, several of us followed you back into the jungle, knowing that you would camp overnight. We planned to kill you and take everything. But just as we were about to come into your camp, we saw that you were surrounded by 26 armed guards, so we left. At this, I laughed to myself and said that I was certainly all alone out in that jungle campsite. At this, I laughed to myself and said that I was certainly all alone out in that jungle campsite. The young man wouldn't accept my word though. He said, No sir, I was not the only one to see the guards. There were six of us who saw them, and we all counted them. It was because of those 26 guards that we were afraid and left you alone. As the missionary was telling this story in his home church, one of the men of the congregation jumped to his feet and asked if the missionary could tell him the exact date this had happened. The missionary told him, and the man then told him this story. On the night of your incident in Africa, it was morning here and I was preparing to go play golf. But for some reason, I felt a very strong urge to pray for you. In fact, the urging was so strong that I called men in this church to meet with me here in the sanctuary to pray for you. Would all of those men who met me on that day please stand up? The man who had met together to pray that day stood up, and the missionary looked around the room at those who were standing. He wasn't so concerned with who they were. He was too busy counting how many they were. There were 26 men standing. In today's first reading, Paul asks for prayers for himself from others so that he may continue to possess the faith and courage to speak about the good news. He asks us to pray all the time to the Holy Spirit to cloak us with the armor of God so that we may be able to fight our spiritual enemies, the dominion of Satan, who can lead us to sin by their clever tactics. The devil strikes us where we least expect, and Paul uses the imagery of a Roman soldier who is fully equipped and ready to go to war to indicate what we need to defeat our spiritual enemies. First is truth buckled round your waist and integrity for a breastplate. The father of lies will cajole us to hide, sugarcoat, and exaggerate the painful truths we must reveal or face. For example, we can gossip and slander someone because we do not like him and want to bring him down. Another is when we bribe a policeman or influential person just so we can avoid penalties or enrich ourselves respectively. We can easily fall prey to the devil's deceptions by rationalizing our sins. Second is the shield of faith in God and zeal through the image of shoes worn to run long distances. We are constantly fighting to survive in a world fraught with difficulties, financial, relational, and so on and we can easily run away from our own problems, lose hope, and be discouraged, especially when these come one after the other. Third is our helmet of salvation, that is, God's saving work, and the sword as the word of God, the scriptures, as our inspiration and guide. Like those who witnessed the life, passion, death, and resurrection of Christ to countless others through the centuries who have believed and whose lives have been touched, we too can trust in Jesus' promise of salvation. If we rely on Him fully, repent for our sins, and follow His commandment of love. 
And most importantly, we need to constantly pray, not just for ourselves, but for others and with others. Oftentimes, we do not pray because we are so overconfident that we do not need to rely on God. And when we do sometimes pray, we think that God is a vending machine who will dispose when we propose, but when we have gotten our desires, our longing for Him expires. We cannot win the spiritual war by ourselves. We need each other to overcome the massive army of evil around us. Every opportunity to pray for each other for a holy purpose is a blessing that God grants because He said so in Matthew 18, 19-20, When two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there in their midst. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray for every person I know who needs you, your graces, your blessings, your forgiveness, and your help. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.